I extend a very warm greeting from a rather cold winter evening from the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalaya in Mumbai. I welcome our audiences here at the museum and those tuning in online from all over the world. It would have been perfect to have everybody be here, gathered under the great dome of the museum as we are today. But we find ourselves in unique times and peculiar circumstances. We're both mindful and sensitive of the tough few days and years we've all had. But historical moments must be marked. We began this morning by planting a beautiful tree in our gardens. And we continue the day by sharing this evening with you. Today, we commemorate not just the centenary of the CSMVS Museum, but also 100 years of the Tata collections at the museum making this year significant in more ways than one. I would first like to invite Mrs. Manisha Nene, our Director of Galleries and General Administration, to address us this evening. Good afternoon and a very warm wel welcome once again. Today, it's a real proud and happy moment for all of us at the CSMVS because our museum has completed its glorious journey of 100 years. We are thankful to all of you who were part of this journey and today you are present and join virtually to commemorate this historical moment. The journey of CSMVS was challenging but enriching. It's very difficult to narrate this journey in just few words. Therefore, we are presenting a small film narrating its milestone and achievements. Thank you. Curiosity, the single driving force for knowledge. Knowledge that can truly change the world. The Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrale is a legacy that has thrived and survived. Indeed, lived to tell the tale every moment. And it has continued to nurture this curiosity for the last hundred years. In 2022, as we bring in the museum's centenary year, it's time to celebrate its contribution in cherishing our heritage celebrating communities, preserving the arts, building connections, and conserving our legacy. The concept of the museum is changing. As the museum evolves and grows in popularity, it becomes more accountable to the different communities living in the city. The museum of the future will be a community space where people can see their identity in terms of cultural continuity. One of the things which we have very clearly said is that it shall not be an elitist museum. Everything would have to be of appeal not only to the, um, the learned, the rich, but also the not so learned, not so are rich. Also, I think what has changed is that we are more than a museum. We are hoping to become a people's place. The museum is important for Mumbai, but also Mumbai is important for the museum. And the museum is really a depository of objects, of memories, uh, that have been collected over perhaps a hundred years in Mumbai which find their safe custodianship in the museum. So it, in a sense it's a custodian of the memory of the city. Uh, and of course the city is important for it because it responds to the city. The city is its client in a sense. And that synergy I think you find in tremendous ways in the museum. I think a museum is important anywhere because a museum takes you to a time and a period and a culture where of which you have really no, no idea to begin with. You can read up on it, you can go there, but seeing 
adds another dimension to it. And I think museum objects are like interactions, they're visual. You know, there are no boundaries to these visual objects. So there is a lot to be gained. And today, the, the methodologies with which they do museum exhibition and all, I mean, in, in the galleries is tremendous. You get so much knowledge out of it and such a wonderful experience. You know, it's very enriching. Now, I have seen uh, the changes in this museum in the last 30 years, but I think our museum, as you know, is one of the finest museums in the country. And uh, it has changed with the times. We have introduced uh, new display systems, interactives, how to engage the visitors. The number of exhibitions which I explained, they are not mere exhibitions. Along with that, we have several programs which are arranged. Like there will be seminars, workshops, then there will be art workshops where people can actually have hands-on activities. Then there will be cultural programs, music programs along. So uh, the previous approach of exhibition is just making the displays no more existing now. And I think that's the most successful medium to change this approach and reaching out to communities in a better way. But so we all come with different expectations different things that we want a museum to do for us. If I experience something different, right? if a work of art or an installation, you know, deepens my understanding of the cultural context of these images and the aesthetics of it and so on and so forth, then I'm grateful. I really am very grateful. Even in its physical form, the museum building represents a binding force within the community. A design that conveys a philosophy of preserving and respecting cultures, multidimensionality, and the breaking of cultural boundaries. The building is thus not merely a structure, but a landmark. It's interesting, uh, personally, when I used to visit as a kid, uh, uh, like how many, most people visited the museum in schools, you were completely awed by seeing the grandeur and seeing this kind of building. As you are aware, uh, Mumbai was a Gothic revival, uh, you know, architecture was chosen uh, as a kind of an official language. And that was in the late 19th century. But a very interesting thing happened in the early 20th century where the focus shifted from uh, Gothic revival to Indo-Saracenic. Uh, again, with the use of uh, an architectural vocabulary which blended and reflected the Indianness in the British architecture in India. And especially since it was supposed to be a museum, uh, it was a competition which was floated. And uh, you know, the, uh, the entrants uh, tried to take uh, the elements of the Indian architecture into it. Uh, the style, as I mentioned to you, is Indo-Saracenic, noted from its arches, domes, minarets, uh, and uh, the chajjas, the jali work. And it stands out to be an, one of the finest examples of how uh, the buildings could be blended in the early 20th century uh, with this style. The year was 1905. At a public meeting at the town hall, a promise was made to give the people at Bombay a gift of their cultural legacy. A group of illustrious members came together to carve a vision for the museum. They overcame many hurdles to finally launch the museum in 1921. This institution, from its very inception till today, is supported by the people. The Bombay Presidency considered the request of Citizens Council and agreed to grant a piece of land and the piece of land is known as Christian site and the only condition they let that the people of Bombay they should be in position to raise money for the construction of the building and should be in position to maintain it in future and the citizens accepted the challenge building was built with citizens contribution largely it is free of influence by any one family by the government or any official body it is a truly independent body it is 
professionally and independently managed. Today, the CSMVS is a global role model for museums of its type. The CSMVS is a global museum, firstly because of its collections, which cover such a wide geographical range, but almost more important is because it has partnerships and friendships with museums around the world, which allows it to tell truly global stories through its exhibitions and its public programs. Nowadays, all the uh, exhibitions which are done, very often the design and the construction of the uh, uh, things is done internally. We have, of course, a world-class um, conservation uh, um, section, sector, which I think is really world-class and definitely one of the best in this part of the world. If you see the historic, sacred and artistic works, these are under the custodianship of various institutions and individuals across the Indian subcontinent. CSMVS has been a repository for almost 70,000 of such works. The thing is that uh, every institution also celebrates its collections by displaying them and researching them. And these objects tell their own stories. Well, one of the stories, the untold story or the little told story is the one of the conservation and restoration of these artifacts that ensure their longevity. Conserve Art Storage Reorganization. In a first in the country, the Conserve Art City CSMBS Art Conservation Project works to upgrade the museum storages. A state-of-the-art storage solution it ensures preventive conservation for over 20,000 historically and artistically significant art objects at CSMBS annually. The, the museum is of critical importance to the city of Mumbai because of the ability that it provides in the enjoyment and education of its population, especially the younger part of that population. That population is one that can learn a great deal from the culture, economic legacy that is carried and embodied in the museum. You know, most big cities in India have their um, theatres, their museums and their libraries in the centre of town, uh, which can often be very inaccessible for the public. Um, it's a challenge for institutions like ours, the CSMVS, the museum, uh, to reach out to the public who are in far-flung areas. Uh, and therefore, the city CSMVS Museum on Wheels outreach project, for us, is the biggest socio-cultural project that we have here in the museum. If, as a museum, we have to remain relevant in the future, we have to really play our civic role properly. We have two state-of-the-art buses uh, that carry knowledge from the museum in the form of exhibitions, objects and educational activities that go to far-flung areas into Maharashtra, deep into rural places in Gujarat um, and reach out to the children over there. These projects are, uh, are quite exciting because each time a bus lands up in, uh, in a village, uh, it's almost like a mail art. For us, it's been uh, a very, very rewarding project. Uh, and we feel that if we are stepping into the bicentenary now, um, we really need to expand outreach programs such as this one uh, so that we can reach out to the public who can't reach the museum. And that's why we say that, you know, if you can't come to the museum, the museum will come to you with the Museum on Wheels. City India has a long history of promoting art and culture in India. And for us, having partners like the CSMBS is critical for us spreading that vision. We very much look forward to our association with CSMBS continuing into the future and I also want to take this opportunity to thank the wonderful team at the museum and especially its visionary director Mr. Mukherjee for all the leadership that it provides. About one fourth of the visitors annually to the CSMBS are children and another half are family audiences making the building of a children's museum the natural next step towards the extension of the CSMVS. 
a long standing dream of our director general sabya saji mukherjee this dream reached fruition in 2014 when bank of america merrill lynch joined hands to support this project the children's museum opened to visitors in 2019 and all of the exhibitions programs festivals even the partnerships that we've had with schools colleges and ngos since then have all embodied the spirit that we are not just child oriented we are child focused all of the activities that we design reflect not just the ideas and values that we want to impart to children but what children themselves find relevant we give them a platform to explore and pursue the ideas and thoughts that pique their curiosity bank of america began its partnership with the csmbs several years ago with its support to the conservation of miniature paintings the making of the children's museum and more recently the research and documentation of collections are other projects supported by them gargu nakate president and country head india bank of america is not only a patron but an active participant in its corporate social responsibility activities we are the only museum in the world located in a heritage building in a heritage precinct to have achieved that distinction so i think it's a very great honor to this museum and glad i could play a role in getting that honor or earning that honor for us so please so the certification entail that we emphasize more on solar energy not only did it give us great savings in terms of financial uh, savings but it also made the environment healthier to that extent so we did that We did great water harvesting. It's millions of liters of uh, water today. For example, this lawn, which is close to four and a half acres, because the whole property is, I think, six acres, is uh, is watered through through harvested water. We also the step we took was for monitoring the air in in the building itself. So water conservation, water harvesting, using non-municipal water, taking advantage of what nature has given us. The museum has received tremendous support from its partners, and notable among them is the Museum Society of Mumbai. The society conducts activities related to Indian art and culture, like insightful lectures, interactive programs, and workshops by renowned scholars and professionals in their respective fields from India and abroad. Very forward-looking. step that the csmbs the prince of wales museum took at that time and we became friends we are really the friends of the museum we work with the museum very closely so we really have grown in harmony in more ways than one and we have i think we have complemented the activities of the museum which is one of our roles as friends we support the museum in whatever way we can research is at the heart of the csmbs's vision for the future it has always strived to create new knowledge around its collections through its research initiatives that led to world class publications each year the museum produces an edited research journal exhibition and collection catalogs thematic newsletters and monographs of specific objects and collections the museum also runs two pg diploma courses in museology and conservation in affiliation with the university of mumbai and the built heritage studies and conservation program in collaboration with nnrhcs and sir jj college of architecture i wish the its message spreads to many places and also to the world actually because not many museums are attaining this 100 years so this is a big achievement for us and my best wishes are with the museum the centenary celebration is reminiscent of the pride the citizens of bombay felt 100 years ago when they first opened the museum's door to the public in future the museum wishes to establish itself as a global cultural institute of excellence that inspires new ideas and interprets the contemporary world for its visitors
matters through its collections that strives for the creation of new knowledge and research that promotes young talent in the arts that nurtures a wave of world partnership and that creates an environment of joy and learning for everyone Thank you, Mrs. Nene, for introducing us to this rather meditative segment of the program today. I hope you all enjoyed the film. It uh, catches but a glimpse of CSMVS and the work we do here. So it's quite an opportune time now to invite uh, Mr. Sabesachi Mukherjee, our Director General, to give us his welcome address. Good evening. We wish you a happy and healthy new year. I am addressing you at a critical time when staff and friends cannot come to the museum due to the rise in COVID cases in the city. Unfortunately, today's program has been curtailed substantially and shifted entirely on the digital platform in view of the latest government guidelines. We thank you for your understanding and affection. I extend sincere greetings to each of you and thank you for being with us on this historic occasion. I also send my greetings with the same warmth to, to those who could not be with us today due to the COVID-related restrictions in the city. Including friends and colleagues around the world who are watching this event, live online or who will see it later when it is posted on our YouTube channel. We thank the Chairman, Board of Trustees, Trustees of the Museum, CSMBS team, Friends of Museum, all our consultants, contractors, printers and workers for transforming the museum into a global institution. It is a pity that many of them are unable to attend today's event. We are very fortunate to have Mr. Shirshagar, our chairman, with us today. Our centenary is a time to rejoice both the past and the present. Our institutional values, people and purposes, such an occasion comes only once in 100 years. On this Centenary Commemoration Day, we remem remember and acknowledge all our founders, predecessors, and patrons whose vision, dedication, and commitment created this museum. However, we are also equally grateful for those who in the intervening decades have worked hard to translate the dreams of the founders into reality and to hand off a strong legacy to all of us who now expand 
their vision across the nation and around the world. The history of the CSMBS is the history of Mumbai. The first heritage precinct is a sacred landscape in which we live, learn and communicate with each other. On 10 January 1922 at 5.15 p.m., the museum opened its doors to the people of Bombay with the opening remarks of the chairman then, Mr. J.P. Brander, collector of Bombay. I quote, the Prince of Wales Museum is the outcome of a strong desire for a museum expressed by government and the public of Bombay long ago. In 1904, government appointed a representative committee which included Sir Ibrahim Rahimtullah, Sir Firosa Mehta and Sir Bitaldas Thackeray. The committee took the views of scientific societies and local bodies, inquired about the Calcutta and Madras Museum and recommended a museum for art, archaeology, science and natural history, combined with a public reading room and library. The committee and the public bodies consulted were emphatic that the main portion of the ob object and the building should be educational, not mere show museum." Unquote. At the conclusion of the chairman's welcome, Her Excellency, the Honorable Lady Lloyd, in the absence went to indisposition of His Excellency Sir G. A. Lloyd, the Governor of Bombay, rose to address the gathering who had assembled on this August occasion. I quote, I myself can imagine no more gratifying memorial of public spirited generosity than to be known to future generations as one of those who made possible the inception of a worthy public museum. And assuredly, the names of Sir Raton Tata, Sir Dorab Tata, Sir Karimbhai Ibrahim and Sir Kawasji Jahangir will be known in Bombay. Nor do I believe that Bombay's credit will suffer for lack of further public spirited donors to come to the support of the museum with gifts of the money or material which are so badly needed." Unquote. How true was Lady Lloyd then? Mumbai's credit was never ever suffered, not even in the disaster-like situation like the pandemic. Philanthropy? and community participation are two old traditions of Mumbai and they continue even today. The CSMBS is truly by the people, for the people and we are very, we are very fortunate to be part of this great institution. The building is a symbol of cultural unity. It was designed by the Scottish architect George Whitted in the indo style in 1909. The museum is the result of the ideas and efforts of so many people. Sir Henry Cousins, uh, the superintendent of archaeology of Western India, brought excavated antiquities from the Buddhist monasteries from Sindh and Gandhara in 1919. The museum was enriched with the magnificent Tata collection as bequest to the trustees in 1921. The selected art objects were displayed all over the building at the grand opening of the museum on 10 January 1922. Today, even after 100 years of the museum's existence, the Tata collection still stands as the largest bequest to the museum. The museum was further enriched in the intervening decades by Sir Akbar Haidari collection, Sir Kawasji Jahangir collection, Kal Khandalawala collection, and more recently Jahangir Sabawala and Kuldeep Singh collections. All these collections have come as gift to the museum. We need to take a moment today and just look around. What a beautiful campus. Look at our heritage and contemporary architectures. Look at the landscaping. Here you get to see the conversation between the past and the present. A hundred years ago, the museum campus did not look quite like this. The museum is changing 
with the ever changing world and change is good it is important that museums connect with the society and represent the people they serve we should not forget that evolving museums help people to read and understand what is unfamiliar to them it promotes intercultural dialogue between communities in multicultural societies and encourages increased knowledge and greater recognition and appreciation of other cultures in short we create culturally enriched sustainable and equitable societies realizing the need of the times the museum has taken adequate measures at the turn of the 21st century to transform all of its existing galleries and all of its basic approach towards museum practice the csmbs has achieved several of its goals with the combination of indigenous skills and foreign expertise and exist not merely as a showcase of antiquities at present the museum is collaborating with 14 institutes all over the world in 2002 redevelopment of the museum's extension wing was undertaken with the support of the premchand and roychand family in 2008 a state of the art full fledged museum art conservation center was established with the support from the ministry of culture government of india and now the center is being maintained and supported by city bank The Jahangir Nikolshan Art Gallery for Modern and Contemporary Art was established in 2008 with the help of the Jahangir Nikolshan Art Foundation. In 2008, the first international exhibition Indian Life and Landscape by Western Artists was organized in collaboration with the Victoria and Albert Museum London. The exhibition was jointly curated by Pauline Ruadgi and Dr. Firoza Godrej. In 2009 the Ministry of Culture Government of India recognized the CSMBS Research Institute for the country's highest research fellowship program the Tagore National Fellowship for Cultural Research three senior research fellows professor Dhavlikar professor Shirin Ratnagar and professor Deepak Kanal have successfully completed their fellowship program from the CSMBS Research Institute The post graduation diploma program in museology and art conservation was initiated at the museum in affiliation with the University of Mumbai in 2009. Krishna Art Gallery was established with the generous donation from Dr. Shudha and Harsh Dehja. Thank you for coming Dr. Dehja. In 2010 the museum received the UNESCO Asia Pacific Award for commendable conservation of the building project. In 2011 a new visitor center comprising of the museum shop auditorium and cafeteria was added with the support of the ministry of culture government of india and the hemendra kotari foundation in 2013 the blockbuster exhibition mummy the inside story was organized in collaboration with the british museum london In 2014 an exhibition Cyrus Cylinder and Ancient Persia a new beginning was organized in collaboration with the British Museum London In 2015 the Jahangir Sabawala bequest containing paintings and his archive was received by the museum a gallery dedicated to this display The establishment of the CSMBS Institutional Archive was initiated in 2015 The Indian Textile and Costume Gallery the first in the city was established at the museum with the help of Ministry of Culture Government of India and with the generous donation from Silpa and Prafulsa in 2015 In 2015 the city CSMBS Museum on Wheels outreach initiative that works on the principle of if you cannot come to the museum the museum will come to you was developed with the support of the ministry of culture government of india and presently run with the support of city bank in 2016 the prince of wales museum research bulletin was revived as the chhatrapati shivaji maharaj vastu sangrahalaya research journal after a gap of 43 years the journal is edited by dr shoryu doshi 
The museum extended its conservation expertise to foreign museums. I think we are the only institute in the country extending our expertise in conservation. At, at present, we are helping uh, the Al Saba Museum, Kuwait, and National Museum, Oman. In past, we helped the Dresden State Museum. In 2017, the Devangana Desha Endowment Program was instituted at the museum, which aims at the propag propagation of research and dissemination of study of ancient, medieval, and pre-modern art, archaeology, architecture, culture, and history of India. In 2017, the Indian Decorative and Metal Gallery was established at the museum with the generous donation from Shuganda and Joy Hiramath Haikal Limited. In 2017, the Prims and Drawings Gallery was established, in, uh, established at the museum with the generous donation from Pauline Radgi and Firoja Godrej. In 2018, the museum was declared UNESCO World Heritage Site, part of the Victorian Gothic and Art Deco Cluster in Mumbai. In 2018, the blockbuster exhibition India and the World in Nine Stories was organized in collaboration with the British Museum and 33 Indian museums and institutions. The exhibition was supported by the Tata Trust and Getty Foundation. In 2019, the city's first children's museum oriented specially to children, teens, young adults, and their adults stakeholders was opened with the support of Bank of America. In 2019, the museum received the highest platinum rating under the existing building category from the Indian Green Building Council for global leadership in environment management with the support of Tata Engineering and Rotary Club of Bombay. In 2019, the museum's collection was enriched by a bequest of 350 Tanjavur paintings and prints from Kuldeep Singh's collection. Today, we are going to inaugurate uh, a selected Tanjavur paintings from Kuldeep Singh's collection after, uh, after the book release program. In 2019, comprehensive conservation of the museum building was undertaken with the support of TCS, Tata Consultancy Foundation. The project was monitored by the conservation consultant Bikas Dilawari, architectural consultant, uh, architectural consultant, lighting consultant Shuresh Koki, contractor Savani Ram Savani, and unique con concrete technologies. In 2020, the money gallery and the jewelry gallery was, were set up with the support of the Hemendra Kotari Foundation. Thank you all. Keeping the role of the museum in contemporary society in mind, the CSMBS management embarked on a plan of creating an underground auditorium and gallery spaces for the history of Mumbai and contemporary art forms. As part of its future initiatives, CSMBS, in collaborating with the Getty Foundation for the prestigious collection sharing program, which will focus on presenting this global view of human history in a reimagined ancient world's gallery at the museum. In collaboration with the British Museum, the State Museum Berlin, National Museum of Anthropology Mexico, and Shanghai Museum. The project aims to reimagine the collections at CSMBS using international loans, raising awareness about our ancient worlds, more particularly among school and college students. The Children's Museum and the Museum on Wheels at CSMBS are going to play a very important role in the future. Both projects will encourage children's creativity and inquisitiveness and also play a positive role as a catalyst in understanding difficult languages of numerous disciplines that exist in contemporary society through an informal, non-competitive learning environment. I think the dependency on technology will be reduced drastically as art is a physical and sensory activity. We are grateful to everyone 
for the support and encouragement and request to all our corporate friends and individuals to invest more in culture for greater dividend. Irina Bokova, the former Director General of UNESCO, she reminded us, I quote, culture alone is not enough to build peace, but without culture, peace cannot be lasting, unquote. This centenary celebration also comes with challenges, but we prepare ourselves for these challenges and look at them as opportunities that help us to lead the museum into its bicentenary with as much optimism, vision, and commitment as was demonstrated by our founders and predecessors also began its first century, who, who began its first century. It is interesting to imagine how the present crisis will reshape visitor experience in the future. The only thing we know is that the museum has to work hard to win hearts of the local community and visitors by improving infrastructure, exhibition qualities, innovative public programming and hygiene facilities during the post-COVID era. We hope the post-COVID era will bring people together to learn more about their past, present and future stimulate new ideas and make them confident to think and work as a responsible community to defeat a future pandemic. Thank you for leading this beautiful museum into bicentenary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mukherjee. I think you bring us all much comfort with your words. And um, I would now like to invite on stage our chairman, Mr. Eknath Shirsagar, to share his thoughts and set the tone for what the future holds. Good evening, friends. These are, as we've heard, unusual and frankly trying times in which we are meeting. We had planned, as you know, a fuller program. Unfortunately, we've had to truncate it. I'm not saying cancel it because we will be postponing it when things are better. But I'd like to use this as an example of the genius of this great institution. <clears throat> the determination of those who work here or are involved with it to achieve the goal set. CSMBS has witnessed, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, and has been affected by epidemics at its birth and now again in its hundredth year. The purpose-built building was ready in 1914, but was commandeered by the then government to become a military hospital. I'm told that was on the first floor. And then I learned that the second floor was taken over by, I think, the government or the BMC for the Spanish flu victims. So, unfortunately, epidemics are not new to us, but we have been able to overcome those and hopefully we'll be able to overcome these as well. Finally, it opened, the museum opened its doors in 1922 and the ASI, Archaeological Society, the Tata Brothers Bequest, which Mr. the Director General talked about, help from the Asiatic Society, BNHS and many others, all have contributed to create a wonderful collection. Today, a major problem is in finding space for new galleries. I can share this, that a lot of the discussion Mr. Mukherjee and I have is where will we find extra space? Now, he has, in his genius, discovered place underground. Hopefully, that will work. <laughs> when it does, it will be very good. But it'll be, the whole purpose is to make it a major hub for cultural activities in this city. We don't have that. 
we don't have a single hub. I know that the city is, you know, very large, but hopefully, if and when, it will soon, the metro system will make it very different. And as you know, in the great cities of the world, the museums continue to be in the center of the city, but the metro system supplies the people. The museum's focus is going to widen in the coming years to include more and more educational and outreach initiatives. As you heard, environmentally conscious projects that draw attention to our natural heritage and its interdependence with culture. Using always a non-elitist approach to sharing knowledge and art with the public, especially the youth. We want this place not to be said, Amala no kohe, this is not for us, this is not so, this is for everyone. The year-long celebration will be an opportunity for the museum to gain access to a wider cross-section of people of the population as well as be a key center for links with museums abroad and in India. You heard the long list of links which we have and what they plan to do and what we plan to do. So let's hope it continues. We're proud to have been, and this is true, as you heard, one of the original crowd-funded institutions, bodies, before, I must say, before the term was invented, crowdfunding. As you heard from the Director General, funding was from various people, small and rich, and we continue to be fully supported, almost, by the generous donors and well-wishers. I think uh, I'd like to just divert, <coughs> mention that last year when we were in deep trouble, again crowdfunding, we managed to gather a large sum of money which saved us by having our, uh, what's it called, adopt an object scheme. I want to thank my fellow trustees for their hard work and interest taken by them in the growth and well-being of this museum. I must pay tribute to our predecessors who had laid the foundation on which we have grown. My grateful thanks on behalf of us, all of us, to Mr. Mukherjee, Ms. Manisha Nene, Ms. Vandana Prapanna, Mr. Ajay Kochle, our finance chief, who usually is in the background, but he's sitting here right in the foreground, I see. And, of course, the conservation Maharaja, Mr. Anupam Shah. Uh, you heard a lot more of the conservation uh, work which we are doing. And the centennial team, led by, so ably, by Joyati Roy, who has been, they have been, key to the success of today's function and hopefully for the future as well. Believe it or not, the objective now which has been set is to establish the foundation for future growth and relevance to our second century. We just finished one, but we're going on to the second. That reminded me of what the great Sunil Gavaskar says, after getting the first century, take guard again and start concentrating on getting the second one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Sir, not only for your speech today, but also for the critical leadership that you provide to all of us. Today, we will also be releasing four publications that have been variously supported by the Bank of America, City, and Praful and Shilpa Shah. I request our Chairman, Mr. Shir Sagar, our Director General, Mr. Mukherjee, and Director Manisha Nene to kindly come on stage and do the honors. Friends, the CSMVS Research and Publication Program has been a rigorous one. We are committed to creating and disseminating new knowledge on our collections through books, catalogs, our research journal, 
and thematic newsletters. The first book that we release today is titled Amru Shataka and the Lives of Indian Love Poems. This book has been authored by Nachiket Chanchani and Janabi Barua Chanchani with a foreword from our chairman Eknath Shirsagar. The Amru Shataka is a 17th century creation of a collection of 100 love poems that has been admired by South Asian literary communities for more than a millennium. This book talks about a beautiful historic project of assembling the poems, their organizers, the lenses through which these poems have been read, amended and deployed. The illustrations from the manuscript feature in the book as well, allowing readers to immerse in a visual treat akin to flipping through the original work, which is part of the CSMVSS collection. The book has been supported by Bank of America. The second book that we will be releasing today is titled The Lost Stupa of Kahu Jodaro, An Attempt at Reconstruction. This has been authored by Sabdesachi Mukherjee with a foreword from our trusty and eminent art historian, Dr. Devangana Desai. The book is a true labor of love. Mr. Mukherjee has been studying this collection in the museum for many years and amidst his vast and complicated administrative and leadership responsibilities, culled time to write this beautifully illustrated, well-researched account of a now lost stupa in Afghanistan. The book comments on Buddhism in Sindh, archaeological remnants from the region, artistic inspirations that led to its construction, and finally an attempt at reconstructing the now lost stupa. The book has been supported by Praful and Shilpa Shah for the centenary. We are also releasing today two portfolios that feature selected treasures of Tanjavur paintings and miniature paintings to celebrate our collections that were acquired several decades back, but also as recently as 2019. Each folio has 10 beautifully set frames that celebrate the rigor and elegance of Indian painting from two diff different styles altogether. The Tanjore portfolio has been supported by City, and the miniature portfolio has been supported by Bank of America. <laughs> On this momentous occasion, one of our long-standing admirers and patrons of the museum, Dr. Harsh Dahejia, has also written a book titled Musings of the Museum. The centenary of the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalaya, which has been published by Niyogi Books. May I invite Dr. Dahejia on stage to accompany everyone in releasing this wonderful book. Dr. Dahejia is not only an author, a historian, but also a great patron of the museum. He supported the Krishna Gallery at the museum and constantly speaks to our staff and curators about his new research. All the books that are being published today will be available in the museum shop. Friends, as I said, we will also be releasing a portfolio on the Tanjore collection, which was generously gifted to us a couple of years back by the eminent architect Kuldeep Singh. He gave away more than 350 paintings from his collections, which are now being inaugurated as part of an exhibition today, but will also be on display in our paintings gallery as a special feature. The portfolio, the portfolio presents 10 beautifully set Tanjore paintings from the collection. We are particularly happy that we have with us today Mr. Abhijit Bansode, Director, Mumbai General Post Office. 
He represents Srimati Veena Srinivasan, Chief Postmaster General of the Mumbai and Goa Regional Offices. It's very special that to commemorate the centenary of the museum, we will be releasing a special cover with the Grade 1 Heritage Building on it. I request our Chairman, Director, Director General and Mr. Bansode to release the cover. The history of the museum and its legacy will now really be in the hands of the general public across the country, thanks to the post office. May I invite Mr. Bansode to say a few words from the stage? Respected dignitaries on the dais, audiences from all over the world who have virtually joined us today for this function through the YouTube. Uh, it is a, indeed a moment of pride for Department of Post to release a special cover on completion of 100 years of CSMVS Museum. This museum has more than 70,000 artifacts not, which are varied from all over the, which are collected from all over the world. The history, it dates back not only to our country, but it dates back to civilization. And this plays an important role also for educating the future generations. So I would once again congratulate the team of CSMVS Museum for completion of 100 years and further many more years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bansode. Everyone knows that the GPO and the museum building are really like sister buildings. Uh, you completed your 100 years a few years back and we complete it today. In the last couple of decades, the museum has forged wonderful partnerships with global institutions, museums, universities and cultural organizations. Today we have two very special messages from our close friends, Dr. Hartwig Fisher, Director, British Museum, and Dr. Eberhard Fisher, Director Emeritus of the Rietberg Museum, with Johannes Belz, its Deputy Director. Let's see their messages. Greetings. I'm Hartwig Fisher, Director of the British Museum. On behalf of all of my colleagues here in London, it is my great pleasure to send our warmest congratulations to the trustees and to all our wonderful colleagues at the Shatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalaya on the occasion of your centenary. CSMVS is an outstanding institution and it has been an honor for the British Museum to collaborate with you. With collegial enthusiasm, we have followed your development and much admire what you have achieved under Mr. Mukherjee's great leadership, opening your museum to an ever-growing number of people from all walks of life and especially to children and young people and communicating so successfully with your local, national, and global audiences. Together, we launched India and the World a History in Nine Stories five years ago, an ambitious and first of its kind project between the BM, CSMVS, and the National Museum in Delhi, supported by the Getty Foundation and Tata Trust, reaching over 400,000 people with its fascinating display and public programs. The exhibition on show first in Mumbai and subsequently in Delhi showcased some of the most important objects and works of art from the Indian subcontinent in dialogue with iconic pieces from the British Museum collection. It highlighted the strong connections India has shared historically with the world, promoting the exchange of ideas across millennia. I remember the stimulating discussions we've had in Mumbai at the Getty Center in Los Angeles and at the BM in London as we shape the scope and contents of the exhibition together. I think of those inspiring days when the CSMVS hosted the special workshop of the BM's international training program in 2015. And I remember uh, the opening of the wonderful children's museum that has set new standards for how kids participate in the future of our institutions. We are grateful for the many conversations we have had on so many levels, on so many subjects. 
and for the warmth and openness that mark our cooperation. We're proud of the work that we have achieved in partnership and we're excited to continue to build on this in the coming years. The excellent relationship between our two museums is key to our common mission of exploring the cultures of the world, elucidating the past and sharing knowledge. It is a privilege to be able to work together as premier cultural institutions in our respective countries and across the world. I wish you the very best for the next 100 years of your magnificent museum and I much look forward to your centenary program. For now, I hope you enjoy the rest of today's celebration and once again, a warmest, heartfelt congratulations for all you have achieved. Dear Mr. Mukherjee, dear ladies, dear gentlemen, dear friends, it's our privilege and a great honor to celebrate you and to wish you all the best for your centenary celebrations in Mumbai. We are proud and happy to enjoy this long, long standing partnership with your museum, which goes back, as I came to know, to 1966 when I was even not born. So I was told by Eberhard Fischer. It is true. I visited the museum for the first time in 1966, coming from Ahmedabad with my friend Hakusha. And I must say we were already then very well received by the friendly staff and we enjoyed very much this fantastic collection. It was Many years later, in 2013, when the Nainzuk film was screened at the museum, to my great surprise, Mr. Mukherjee had prepared with his staff a superb special exhibition on this painter, Nainzuk. It was possible because the museum possesses the finest and worldwide seen the largest collection of works by this eminent painter. It was a wonderful show and I shall always treasure that I was invited at the opening ceremony by lighting the lamp together with my wife Barbara. Thank you, Mr. Mukherjee. I will always praise the CMVS Museum, wishing the museum, its director and its excellent staff all the very best. Since this exhibition many more projects and collaborations happened, as for example in 2014, the, Alex, the exhibition on Alice Brunner, a project I enjoyed very much. I would like to thank you and wish you all the best and we look forward to collaborate with you in the future. Thank you very much. academic and curator known for her erudition in Indian miniature painting and Jain art. Dr. Doshi has minutely observed the trajectory of the CSMVS, acting as its advisor, critic and mother figure to its research initiatives. But perhaps most importantly, she is only 10 years younger than the museum today. Respected Sri Kshir Sagarji, Chairman, Board of Trustees, the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangradhan, popularly known internationally as the CSMVS and also as the Museum in the City, members of the Board of Trustees and Director General Sabe Sachi Mukherjee. It is indeed a matter of great pride and pleasure for me to be here today to address the inaugural ceremony of the CSMVS centenary year. When Dr. Mukherjee extended the invitation to me, I was taken by surprise as I was neither a renowned scholar nor an eminent public figure to be accorded such an honor and was his hesitant to accept it. A few days later, when sitting with a group of staff members at a museum working on a project, the subject of the inauguration came up 
and I said that I was not sure about giving the speech. Then one of the younger members said, but madam, you are only a little more than a decade younger than the museum. At that time, it dawned on me that I was perhaps the only person with the longest association with the museum. And so, I am here before you today as the senior most member of the museum circle of scholars and admirers. In fact, my connection and with the museum goes back to about 60 years and it has played a pivotal role in shaping my life and deepening my understanding of the country's art and culture. I joined the museum's newly uh, instituted research uh, centre in 1963 for my PhD degree. In those days, the atmosphere of the institution was very stimulating as the museum's activities were primarily focused on augmenting its collection and conducting research on new discoveries in the field. Moreover, as a student, I had the wonderful opportunity to meet visiting scholars like Dr. Norman Brown from the USA, Dr. Douglas Barrett from London, as well as Dr. Indian scholars such as Dr. Nihar Ranjanare from Calcutta and Dr. Uma Kansha from Baroda and several others. It was exciting to listen to these their discussions to note their various theories and their opinions. One person, uh, uh, doctor, one person who was particularly interesting was Dr. Shivram Murthy. It was a delight to listen to him as it was peppered, his talk was peppered with Sanskrit shlokas which often contained insights into human behavior. But the most meaningful experience was to listen to Raisa, the doyen of Indian art, who had come to Bombay on an extended visit from Banaras. I would sometimes go over to meet him. Uh, once while examining a miniature painting with him, I impatiently asked him what the school of painting would he, what school would he ascribe the painting to? And he looked at me and very kindly said, Dekho Beti, first appreciate the painting, its beauty and its color scheme, its forms and its unusual features, and then proceed to study it and apply, analyze it in order to identify its style and date. These, his words made a profound impact on me and they resonate with me in my mind to this day. In 1970 and 80s, under the energetic direction of Gorakshikar, the museum turned its attention to renovation and redesigning the display of, uh, modern, uh, of, uh, on modern lives. And then when Kalpana Desai became the director, she combined the approach of the two preceding phases that of research and of redesigning the museum spaces, as well as introduced com com computerization. Her competent handling added to the museum's prestige, and it was recognized as one of the leading museums of the country. During his tenure, Dr. Mukherjee continued the earlier policies of the of enlarging the museum facilities by establishing a center for children uh, and, and implementing the concept of museum on wheels to travel to smaller towns and villages to expose the population of those areas to art. But above all, his creative handling of the muse of museum matters and his friendly, inclusive approach have encouraged this, uh, the art lovers of the city to become involved in museum uh, activities, contribute to it and has incentivized them to support even um, some of them financially. 
Today, the museum is not just a facilitating repository of antiquities and a center of scholarly pursuits, but a source of inspiration to all those who pass through its covered doors. The building, its contents, and the vision of the people who have steered its affairs have contributed to its greatness. The government, too, has provided constant support. Thanks to the concerted effort of all concerned, the museum is now considered to be a world-class institution. Under Dr. Mukherjee's enlightening policies, it uh, aims to rise to greater heights by establishing itself as a cultural institute of excellence, contribute to research, promote young talent, and nurture a wealth of international partnerships. The CSMBS has made the country proud of its achievements and we wish it great success in its future endeavors. Thank you. In today's program, we pay a very special homage. A homage to a collector, an architect par excellence and a visionary, Kuldeep Singh. In 2019, Mr. Singh decided to gift all of his 350 Tanjore and Mysore paintings to the CSMVS as he was impressed by its storage and display facilities. Today we inaugurate the exhibition, Three Dimensions of Divinity, Tanjore paintings from the collection of Kuldeep Singh gifted to the CSMVS. The exhibition is supported under the City CSMVS Conserve Arte project. I request our chairman, Director General and Director to light the lamp and mark the auspicious beginning of this exhibition. May I also invite Mr. Hash Dahejia and Mr. Bansode to join them near the lamp. We would also like to thank the family members of Mr. Singh, in particular Professor Nayanjot Lahiri and Mr. Harmeet Singh Bhava for their association with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Colleagues, we will end today's program with a short video on the Tanjavur exhibition. We very much hope that we can welcome you back to the museum soon so that you can participate in the many exciting programs and events we have envisaged for the year. Our centenary programs will be organized in a hybrid fashion and remain accessible for everyone on our social media platforms. Thank you and good night for today. 
stay well, stay indoors, and enjoy art. Thank you.